be doing something really special with the RGB lights going on behind me. Not only are you going to be able to let your viewers change the colors of your lights through chat commands and channel points, but you'll even be able to trigger some crazy strobing effects where your lights are flashing and changing colors and you can even have them trigger every time you get a sub or a raid. But we're not even going to stop there because we're going to combine these lighting effects with all of the other concepts that we've learned on this channel to create some insane animations that are going to make your stream so much more fun for your viewers and just blow all of their minds. Here's a couple of quick examples. This is one that on our channel we call the Meltdown. We added... <laughs> you guys were telling me to add this in and I finally did it. And this is another one that we call Solar Flare for obvious reasons. Solar Flare! By the end of this video, you're gonna have all of the tools that you need to create effects just like these for your own Twitch stream. This is gonna be a long one, but I promise you, it's gonna be worth it. I wanna start this video by talking about the sponsor of this video, Lumia Stream. Don't skip this ad, okay? Get your finger off that progress bar. You're watching this video all the way through. In order to create all of the lighting effects that we're going to be making today, we need some kind of software to control our lights. That's where Lumia Stream comes in. So Lumia Stream is a really cool program that consolidates all your different brands of lights. So Philips Hue, LifeX, Nano Leaves, you know, all the triangles that people put behind their streams. But you can control all of your different lights from a single place. And that alone makes Lumia Stream really powerful because now you don't have to buy a particular brand of lights. You can even buy multiple different brands of lights. And as long as they're supported by Lumia, your viewers will be able to control them on your live stream. But apart from that, it's just loaded with a ton of features. It's integrated with Stream Elements, Streamlabs, OBS, Touch Portal. You can even make it react to music or the colors on your desktop. There's just so much you can do with it. Now they do have a free version and a paid version, but don't worry, everything that you're gonna see today can be done on the free version. With that being said, I did work with Lumia Stream to do a giveaway, so we're going to be giving away five codes for Lumia Stream Premium. And since it's also compatible with Touch Portal, we're gonna be giving away five codes for Touch Portal Pro as well. So the details of that giveaway will be in the description and good luck. All right, so before we look at Lumia Stream, we need some lights. So what lights do we need to buy? Lumia has a list of all of the different brands that they support and it supports all of the major brands that you've come to expect like Nano Leaves, Philips Hue, LifeX, Gamer Triangles, you know, you know, you know the whole deal. But it also works with cheaper brands like Colo Light and Govi if you're one of those poor peasant streamers that didn't make the top 10,000 streamers in that Twitch leak. It's even compatible with Elgato key lights and even though they're not RGB, you can still control the brightness and color temperature through Lumia. I just wanted to point that out because Elgato is paying me money now and I want to make them happy. Keep in mind that not all lights are perfectly compatible with Lumia. If you look at the list of supported lights on Lumia's website, you can see that some lights don't support things like smooth transitions or rapid switching between different colors. Now the lights that I have lighting the shelf behind me, those are called Yi lights. I believe they're the cheapest lights available that support Lumia and they support smooth transitions and rapid cycling. And the base kit comes with a single two meter strip, which I bought two of so I can have two banks of light for each side of my shelf. But I also bought a bunch of their one meter extension strips so I can cover the entire shelf. I also bought some of these much cheaper Govi LED strips and these don't support smooth transitions or rapid cycling. But if you're on a budget and you just want cheap lights to get you started, yeah, we're gonna try these and see how these work out. Regardless, I'll leave a link down below for all the different brands of lights that I use for my setup. So now that you picked out the lights that you wanna buy, let's install Lumia Stream. So head on over to the Lumia Stream website and download it, run through the installer. When you open it up for the first time, you're probably gonna get a first time setup wizard, but I don't have any footage of that because frankly, I wasn't gonna uninstall my entire setup just to show you that. I'm not that dedicated, come on now. But anyway, this is the main interface for Lumia. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go into the connections tab. This is where you're going to connect all of your different lights, but it's also gonna be the place where you're gonna connect your Twitch channels, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, as well as OBS. 
We'll start by connecting OBS. So under streaming services, click on add new connection and select OBS. You'll need to enter in your OBS WebSockets port number and password. Now, if you don't know what any of this is, OBS WebSockets is a plugin that you need to install for OBS, and that allows third-party programs to communicate back and forth with OBS. If you've ever used something like Leoran Board or Touch Portal, you already have this plugin installed. The port and the password number that you need to enter will be under Tools and WebSocket Server Settings inside of OBS. Now, you can also connect your Twitch account, Stream Elements account, and Streamlabs account, but I'm actually going to skip this because we're going to be setting up Lumia in a way that literally no other YouTube video does. It's going to be, you're going to see what we're going to do later. Next, you're going to come down to your lights, add a new connection, and then select your brand of lights. Like I said, you can use multiple different brands of lights. I'm using Yi Lights and Govi RGB strips and they work together seamlessly, but you do need to connect your lights to your local network before you add them here in Lumia. Most lights are gonna have some kind of app for your phone that you're gonna use to set up your lights. So make sure you do that first before continuing. Oh, and by the way, if you're looking to connect your Elgato key lights, you'll find that under this last section here. They work a little bit different to all the other different brands of lights. Next, we're gonna start programming our lights to do different things. So that could be changing to different colors or maybe effects like breathing in and out or even flashing between different colors. All of that gets done here in the studio tab. This is where you set up all your different types of lighting effects. Now, I'm gonna be honest here, some of these options are confusing and weirdly labeled. So instead of exposing just how little I actually understand this program, uh, I'm just gonna show you the two sections that I personally use for my stream. We'll start with the scene tab. The scene tab is where you'd set up all of your static color effects. So for example, in my setup, I have a static effect where this side of my room is purple and this side of my room is blue. But let's say I wanted to change my lights to the color red. So then I would go into add scene and under slot one, I change the color here and we'll just change this over here to red. Then I need to tell Lumia which of my lights I want to be that color. So I'm gonna drag in the lights behind me are my two E lights. So I'm gonna drag that in here and this over there. And when I click test, you can see the lights behind me, they're both red now. But you can also make both of your lights different colors. So if I wanted to do that, then I'd add another slot. I'll leave this one blue and then I'll drag one of my lights out and then drag it back here to the blue section. And now when I test it, one of my lights is blue, the other one is red. But what if you wanted your lights to animate, like maybe a flashing effect or a breathing effect? That all gets done in the reactions tab. So if you wanted to add some kind of animation for your lights, come over here to add reaction and this is how it works. Let's say I wanted my lights to cycle between red, green, and blue. So I come over onto the right side and just add three slots and change the color of these lights to red, green, and blue. And what Lumia will do is it will cycle between each of the colors that we add for each of the slots. Now, the cycle duration is gonna tell Lumia how long that animation is gonna be. So if I type one second here and click test, then it's gonna cycle through all three of those lights over the span of one second. Now, if you want your lights to smoothly animate between colors instead of just doing these hard cuts, then you can set a transition time. So if we change this to one second and then test this out, you can see the lights behind me. They're not just doing hard cuts. They're just flashing rainbow colors. Now. Ooh. now, if you wanted to control your Elgato key lights, like in my Solar Flare Redemption, that gets done in a separate section. So you'll come down into devices, smart plugs and key lights, and then you'll add your two key lights here. And here you can set the color temperature and the brightness for your lights for whatever this effect is. This is where you can get really creative. Like in my meltdown effect, I set my key light brightness to zero and I also make my lights flash between the color red and then off completely. And that creates this kind of effect. This is one that's really popular with my stream. As for the other tabs in the studio section, just play around with them. The animation tab is very similar to the reactions tab. You just have more options. And then the themes tab is pretty much the same thing as the scenes tab. Anyway, now that you have all the different animations for your lights set up, we have to tell Lumia when to actually trigger these effects. For example, if someone uses a channel point redeem, I want my lights to change to the color blue. Or if someone donates a certain amount of money, 
then trigger the solar flare effect, which makes the lights behind me go white and the key lights kick up to max brightness. Before we do that, we need to set up a default state for our lights because when we run an effect, Lumia needs to know what states to bring our lights back to. For example, in my setup, I have blue and purple lights. So it probably makes sense that after someone runs a solar flare, that Lumia needs to change my lights back to its blue and purple state. This is what the default states tab is for. This is where you can set the color of your lights while it's just idling. Generally, you probably want your lights to be a static color. So I set mine to scene and I just created a scene where my lights are blue and purple, but you could also make the default states an animation if you wanted to. I don't know why you would do that, but you have that option. And then if you have Elgato key lights, this is where you would change the default color temperature and brightness. Once you've set your default state, now we can tell Lumia what to do anytime you get a sub, anytime someone uses channel points, anytime someone donates a certain amount. And all of that gets done in the alerts tab. Now, if you've watched any other Lumia tutorial before, forget everything you've learned. I'm gonna, I'm about to do it better. See, normally you would think that you would have to connect your Twitch account or your Streamlabs or Stream Elements account to Lumia, right? And you can go ahead and do that if you want to. So if you connected your Twitch account, you'd see your Twitch account here in the alerts tab. And then along the top, you'll see follower, subscriber, bits, and you just need to tell Lumia which lighting effect that you want to run for that event. You can do that if you wanted to, if you want to be a basic bit. I'm not a fan of this method for two reasons. One of them is Frankly, I find the interface in Lumia a little bit overwhelming and a little bit confusing, but more importantly, if you're a big fan of this YouTube channel, you're probably using something like Leoran Board or Touch Portal and you're doing all of these other effects somewhere else. And if you're an advanced OBS user like me, you probably want your lighting effects to sync up with things that are happening in OBS, like a filter change or a transition. That's really difficult to do when you have two different softwares that have two different mechanisms for queuing up actions. So I actually worked together with Lumia to bring a feature that addresses that exact problem. Here's how it works. In my setup, you'll see my Twitch section, all of my subscriber events, bit events, everything here is just disabled. All of them are turned off. We're gonna come to the OBS section and along the top, you'll see all of these different OBS events. The only one that we care about is the scene item visible tab. Basically what you can do in this tab is you can tell Lumia to listen to OBS. And whenever OBS tells Lumia that a particular source has become active, Lumia can pick that up and say, ah, okay, now I'm gonna run this lighting effect. Now, what does this mean for you? Well, I can set up a whole bunch of dummy sources in OBS that literally do nothing. In fact, my viewers will never even see these. These are just blank text sources. But check this out. If I create a new blank text source called the lights blue, and then go into Lumia in the scene item visible tab, I can add these things called variations. And in fact, I'm gonna check the box here that says only variations. And basically what this means is I'm gonna tell Lumia to only look for this particular source that's called lights blue. And I want you to run this lighting effect anytime that this text source becomes enabled. Let me show you what I mean. We're gonna add a new variation and we're gonna give it a name. It can be whatever name that you want, it's not important. Then we need to tell Lumia which lighting effects that we wanna run. So remember the lighting effects that we created in that studio section earlier? We can run any of those effects through here. So for me, I want my lights to turn blue. I've created a lighting effect that's called blue. We're gonna select scene under the type tab and then under the value tab, we're gonna select the blue effect. This is where the magic happens. Under condition, we're gonna select equals to and then conditional value. This is where you type out the name of that dummy source that you created inside of OBS. Now you can test it out. If you click apply to save your changes, go back into OBS and just turn on that dummy source. If you've done it correctly, congratulations, your lights behind you should now turn blue. 
And you can use this concept as many times as you want. If you have 20 different lightning effects inside of Lumia, then you create 20 different dummy sources inside of OBS and you just add a variation for each of those dummy sources. Just keep in mind that the effect is only going to last as long as this duration field. So if you want the effect to last like basically forever, then just type out a really long number here like 99999. Now you could probably see where we're going with this, right? Because now we can effectively connect Lumia over to Lioran board or connect it to touch portal or mix it up or whatever it is that you happen to be using. Here's what I mean. If I'm using something like Lioran board and I want my lights to turn blue, all I need to do is turn on that lights blue dummy source inside of OBS. And then Lumia is going to pick that up and say, oh yeah, that source became enabled. I'm going to run that lights blue lighting effect now. Now this doesn't just have to be a color change. It could be any of the other types of reactions inside of Lumia. So you can make your lights flash or you can make your lights switch between rainbow colors. And because we're triggering all of this through Lioran board, we can sync that up to filter changes or shaders or transitions or whatever you want to do inside of OBS. It can all be synced together. And then you can just add all your triggers as you normally would inside a Lioran board. So if you want it to trigger every time someone uses channel points, then you just add a channel point redeem. If you want it to trigger on bits, then you just add a bit trigger. So we've effectively made Lumia compatible with literally anything. Anything that's able to turn sources on and off inside of OBS can work with all of these lighting effects now. And that is really cool because I came up with it. You're welcome. Now, I know this video was f***ing long, okay? Jesus Christ, I don't know why you guys are still here. But if you are still here, you probably are a very advanced user of OBS. And so I want to leave you with one extra detail that I'm sure you will appreciate. See, right now, if you want to trigger a lighting effect inside of Lumia, you have to quickly toggle on and off your dummy source. And so that requires adding two commands inside of Lioran board. However, Thanks to our good friend Exeldro, he created a script that will automatically turn off a source anytime that you turn it on. I'll leave a link down below to where you can get that script, but basically you just download it, you go into your tools, scripts, and then you add the script there. And then in scenes and groups, add in the name of the scene that contains all of your dummy sources. Also make sure to add a delay of 10 milliseconds because apparently it doesn't work with zero milliseconds. But if you've done it right, then anytime that you turn on a source that's within that lighting scene, it's automatically turned. But there you have it. That is it. Guys, I know that was a long one. You better subscribe to me, okay? This video is to look out. It's 6 a.m. for me, and I'm still up making this shit for you. Let me know in the comments down below what kind of cool lighting effects that you guys are gonna come up with. And if you do create something really cool, number one, tweet it at me so I look more popular in Twitter. To come into the Discord and post it there. I really genuinely want to see what cool things that you guys can come up with. And lastly, come follow me on Twitch. I stream three nights a week there and I work really hard in this video. So I deserve viewers now, okay? I'm pretty sure that's how that works. I'll see you guys sometime.